Guatemala is a beautiful, beautiful country. However, the water resources are not well managed and have gone polluted. We need that water to survive. I'm in a privileged position. I live in the U.S. and I have access to satellite data, technological advances. I am a Guatemalan at heart. I feel very privileged to come back home and join efforts with the rest of people that are trying to do something for Lake Atitlan. We are in a revolutionizing era for satellite data because we have so many freely available resources. We have satellites orbiting the air from NASA and from the European Space Agency. With that completely different perspective, you can tell so much about the surface of the Earth. It's just amazing. I'm Africa Flores. I work with satellite data to inform decision making for environmental management. I grew up along the Pacific coast of Guatemala. In the town where I grew up, there is a lot of agriculture and there is also a lot of pollution that goes into the rivers. I remember the stories from my parents and my grandparents of those freshwater bodies that they were clean and they would go there to play, to swim. When I was growing up, those were already polluted. When I was studying at college, I had the opportunity to visit different parts of the country and I saw clean water resources. For me, it was amazing and inspiring and so beautiful to see that we still had clean surface water in Guatemala. It drove me and inspired me to keep working on protecting our environment. So I study renewable natural resources and I took a lot of classes like hydrology, soil, forestry and everything was on the field, you know, measuring the trees, the rivers. And then I was introduced to a satellite image. From above, from space, I could see directly the forest and the condition of that forest and I could see the river and the water quality of that river. It completely revolutionized my world of the work that I was doing. I was like, I want to keep doing this. I started working in a project called CERVIR, and CERVIR is a project between NASA and USAID that focuses on building the capacity of countries to use air observation for environmental decision making. We map the surface and everything that is in the surface and the changes that happen there. There are many parameters that we can derive from satellite images. The observation that has been used the most comes from optical sensors, but in addition to that, we have radar and that's a different type of observation. We call it all weather because it can see through clouds. So for example, this is um, a result for the Mayan Biosphere Reserve. There is a lot of deforestation. A fire is a very common practice that is being used to clear the land. So we can see a lot of changes here and when it happened, the colors identify the dates. Also, water quality, which is where I have focused a lot, try to use satellite data to monitor the quality of the water. This is Lake Atitlan, one of the most beautiful places on earth, as you can see. And I say like, it's, I'm not biased <laughs> because I'm from Guatemala, but it is. The water of the lake is vital for the tourism, for fishing, and even for human consumption. 
The lake is surrounded by towns and about 40% of those towns consume the water directly from the lake without any treatment. This lake is known for being pristine, clean, beautiful, and then suddenly an algae bloom happened. An algae bloom is the proliferation of one or two species that is massive. It's due to the lack of wastewater management and the amount of nutrients that come into the lake that become food for it. It was identified as cyanobacteria. The species that caused the algae bloom, it did not produce toxins. However, other cyanobacteria identified in the lake do have the possibility to produce toxins. Everyone was worried and it had a big hit in tourism at the time. The first algae bloom occurred in Lake Atitlan in 2009 and we monitored that bloom from beginning to end. Since 2009, it has been suffering from algae blooms. So this is in October of last year and there is some algae. Yes, this is January, we definitely see the, the algae bloom there. That's March, there is algae bloom. All algae contain the chlorophyll pigment, so we use it as a proxy. And I work on calibrating an algorithm that will allow us to estimate chlorophyll concentration from satellite images. You raise a lot of awareness in terms of how massive the algae bloom was. And it was information that was used a lot by the local authorities and by the society as well. Now the project is about forecasting algae blooms and we need data to calibrate our model. We are collecting our data to see how much sedimentation has gone into the lake that carries nutrients for the algae. And connecting that with what we can do here at Servir with artificial intelligence and machine learning. If we are able to predict with enough skill when algae blooms are going to happen, we can also have a timeline of how long do we have to save the lake. There is the impression that natural resources can go forever, but they can disappear, they actually can disappear. The real impact we want to have is that this will drive actions to preserve the lake. For example, building water treatment plants, raising awareness in civil society about the system itself and know that the actions that they take have an impact on the water quality of the lake. There is no better people to manage these resources as the local people. I think it's beautiful, so beautiful, like I can't even use words to describe the richness and everything that it represents and to think that you come from this land and you want to make the best use and you want your kids also to be able to see it. This is an amazing opportunity to come back home and do something with the skills that I have gained. It makes me closer to my roots and to my family and gives me the opportunity to do something for, for my country. Thank you.